we're going to try something different, <clears throat> spice it up. We're going to do a little uh, Friday action here. Fine Art Feedback Friday at 4 o'clock. Say that four times fast. <laughs> and <laughs> Welcome, Alice. We're going to take a look at one of your pieces today. And, uh, and when Kelly gets on, we'll take a look at one of her pieces. Um, and I'm not really sure how this is going to work. We're kind of just jumping in. And uh, we'll, work, we'll figure it out as we go. So I'm going to take a look at... Uh, here's one of um, Kelly's pieces here. And she had a concern. There you are, Miss Kelly. And um, so we'll take a look at uh, your piece first there, Kelly. That way you can get going. Um, and... Uh, And, uh, and then we'll take care of Alice there. All right, so let me get to my Photoshop. And what I'd like you to do is I'm looking at my phone. So if I say something, there's going to be a little bit of a, de uh, a delay. But um, if I say something uh, or you have a question about what I'm saying or whatever, just write it in the, in the little box, okay? Um, at some point... We're going to try to get like a phone number for you guys to call in on. Um, you know, we'll figure out that technology um, as we move forward. But, um, but yeah, this is what we're doing today. So this is a, a pretty picture by Miss uh, Kelly. And <clears throat> you were saying, Kelly, um, let me get uh, my layers here. You were saying you wanted two emotions. One, you wanted uh, some birds coming to you to bring comfort to you and you were saying that there was wind to your back and what was the word that you used uh, let me find it here um, my intent was to show oh insecurity okay insecurity all right so which is a beautiful place to start because at the academy we call it changing the charge which is basically making people feel two different emotions in an image and then you want to kind of bridge that gap right so what, what you're saying is I'm, in, I'm feeling insecure but these two little messengers these two little birds are coming and they're bringing comfort to me which is brilliant okay so when thinking about that uh, you ultimately ask do you need to start over and I'm just going to tell you up front, yeah, you will. And you're probably like, no, I put so much time into this beautiful face. And you did. Uh, but that's why you want to plan before you get too far ahead so you don't, um, so you can problem solve these things out before you really invest too much time in, in the execution of the work. Um, one of the things is, you know, you started out with, with, this, with, with this face and um, and it's kind of right there in the center, and now you're trying to build this story around it. Um, the idea of having her lean forward maybe with her arms crossing, uh, I think that you don't need to go there. Um, <laughs> oh, good, you're smart. Uh, you don't need to go there. You don't need to try to add more things to it. But you do want to think about your spacing and how you're placing your uh, your items in there. So I think adding the two birds is absolutely fine. Uh, but what you do want to think about is what is the energy of insecurity and what is the energy of comfort? What is the energy of something coming to you rather than away from you? What is the energy of something coming against you, like pushing you against your back? So let's answer those four questions. Let's start with insecurity. And the first thing we want to do is maybe just in a gesture um, stage, draw a, a division line, okay? Um, I, I think this is just too big. Okay, there we are, okay? So what we can say then is, let's say here, anything underneath this line will be the insecurity, okay? That's where we're starting. Anything above this line will make us feel 
the positive charge, okay? So if, so if ultimately you're going to have your two birds in here, what they bring will be a positive, what we'll call it a positive charge, and what is happening in security down here, we'll call it a zero or a negative charge, okay? So if the energy, and your eye is always going to start at the top left-hand corner, so we need to figure out how are we going to get the eye, not, not to the comfort, but to the insecurity first, okay, down here, and then from here, how do we get them up here to catch this part and then bring it back down here? So you kind of have to, in a w weird way, think of yourself more like a football coach, you know, trying to plan out the plays of the game. How are you going to get the ball to, to, you know, to the other end of the field and make a touchdown? Now, don't get it twisted. I know nothing about football, that, even though I just made it sound like I did, okay? Uh, <laughs> but, but that's how you have to think. You have to think about how are you directing this? How are you choreographing this? How are you uh, planning this play? And so, you know, we need to come down through here and add in that negative charge. Now, let's think about, well, first of all, we, we, we want the eye to move in this direction, okay? And then at some point, we need the, the eye to shoot up, okay? So that we can use the side of her face to do that part of it. Uh, maybe rather than, uh, let me lower this now. Maybe rather than having the hair blow with wind like this, okay? Maybe, oops. Maybe this part of the, the hair, the, act, the hair actually falls okay and and the reason why is now the hair is bringing us up from here up here okay like like so it also remains calm so that you know the wind that's blowing against her back isn't bothering this part of the image because the charge in here is actually comfort it's peace it's stillness underneath the line well, now we want the chaos and the insecurity and the uncertainty, okay? You got the pressure of the wind blowing against the back. So what we might want to do is start to bring in curves in here so that our eye is feeling like the pressure of that, okay? Also, insecurity, you don't want to use a straight line. You want to use multiple lines because that energy is going to be uh, ha have a vibration that causes you uh, to have an insecurity, you know, how do I say this? It's going to cause your eye to kind of move back and forth a little bit, causing you to actually feel insecure or, or on rock or on a ground that's moving, right? So maybe rather than doing a curve like this, what we might want to look at is coming through here like this, and then maybe in like this. Um, so now you can see how like that that energy is starting to break up. So it's still pushing us forward down here, but now there's like this strange uh, back and forth teeter-tottering type of energy. When we get up in here, we're going to have straight hair, okay? The, the wind isn't blowing in her hair on that end. And, and these are just suggestions. I'm not you know, telling you what to do. These are just principles and suggestions so you get the concept and then you can go back and figure out what it is that you want to do for your art. Okay, so now we have the hair at peace over here. It's, it's locked into the face. Um, I'd probably bring the neck down a little here rather than the hair crossing over the neck. You want to try to keep as, as many of the angles here moving the eye up towards the birds. Now, in, in terms of the peace, peace um, or, or, or the calm, okay, I would suggest that everything from her eyes down, and maybe you even put her eyes on a straight horizontal, okay? So let's go ahead and, and do that. Okay, we're going to go boop, boop. We're going to pop her up there, okay. Beam, okay. So now what I want to do is lower all of this so we can see our marks, but actually, 
actually, I also want to do this. Let me gray them out so we're not getting confused. Okay, so now what we're going to do is anything underneath the eye, like let's say halfway of the eyes, okay? And the reason why I'm saying that is because we're going to look at her eyes, and at that point, we want to feel that there's a, this, something is descending into her. It's, it's, it's falling into her. Okay, so what we want to do is go in and start really emphasizing the the horizontal lines. Even though her eyes are, are, are round, try to find where you can put as many horizontals as possible, horizontal connections. And one way of doing that is you can draw a straight line as a horizontal or you can do... Um, you can have a, a point here, a point here, and, and a line here, and that gives you a horizontal too. So you can have an implied line is, is really probably the, the smartest way to go. Um, her, her nose, like where can you come in here and, and put highlights and, and, and shadows and little marks in here that are horizontal? It's a little hard to do this with my stylus. Um, down in her lips really emphasize the horizontals maybe open her mouth just a little bit um like right now like this this is really this angle is really strong right so i would maybe make that angle subtle and then the angle and the horizontal in front a little stronger okay and the reason why you want to do that is because then when the eye picks up all those horizontals she communicates that she's at peace. She's calm in that part of, uh, of her now, all right? When you're doing, let's say, the background and, and, and you're trying to figure out how to communicate that story, what you might do is have a, a gradient back here, but you move your pencil in that horizontal movement, okay? So now, again, it's just kind of pushing out that horizontal thrust which communicates peace, calm, rest, okay? Now, everything above her eyes, you want to uh, basically somehow get it to come back to the birds. So what I would do is I would start with a curve and then everything from her hair. And again, you're just using implied lines like this, okay? So now th these birds are connected to her. They're coming to her. Um, you can see how the eyebrow, if you, if you put a little emphasis on that front, front part of the eyebrow and then let this side fade away, well, that little harder contrast now relates to the bird. So maybe um, you might put a wing of the bird here and the bird is kind of flying in here, okay? Um, and maybe his little tail is here. So now he's creating all these little points along that curve, which is bringing you into the face, right? So we know that the bird is connected and it's bringing you into the into the face. Um, we can have a, a curve here, which then brings us down to the eyes. All of this brings us in. And then when you get down into this section, now we go into horizontals. So we're changing just the energy of the of the marks that you make, which then communicate it makes us feel uh, something different. So what we have are these curves which connect us to the birds. Okay, we could put a bird up here and uh, another set of wings here. Let's go ahead and pop the birdie bird out. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, you can begin to see how now it's connecting to, to her. Um, See, at this stage, this is the messy stage. This is the gesture stage. This is where, um, uh, th this is the part in which you want to really just get your pencil on the paper, work it out, think through it. Think of it not in terms of form, but just in terms of, uh, of the energy. And the energy is created by, by the combination of lines that you have. So... In this case, we're doing curved lines that are moving us in this direction. Um, over here, we're doing diagonals that are moving us in, in, up to the birds. Anything below the below the uh, eye, halfway through the eyes, are really going to focus on those horizontal feel. And then anything that's in this quadrant over here, we're going to really 
so her hair would be maybe like this, you know. Um, you can have have the hair moving forward because that part of, of the wind is blowing. Um, maybe uh, maybe a strand is coming in here, but you see how it's kind of broken up like this. And so you want to get really like intentional about this part of it. Like just get aggressive. This is like this is like caveman talk. Okay, <laughs> um, if a caveman was like trying to explain some, I mean, if, if we were trying to explain something and, and be very romantic about it, we might use big words and, and long words and, uh, and many words, you know, and we would say, oh, you know, the, the, the feathers of the angels are combing your hair, you know, into this, uh, this, um, uh, a ray of light or some bullshit like that right and uh, but the caveman will say hair move up <laughs> hair messy right and that's what we're doing we're like uh aggressive up connect peace <laughs> you know that's basically what we're doing okay and then once you have it at that level then you can go back and begin to finesse it and romance it and and build it out. Does that make sense, guys? <laughs> and yes, Kelly, you're going to have to think like a caveman for a minute. <laughs> okay, so that's my suggestion. Um, in terms of, real quick, uh, in terms of... Uh, placement okay uh oh my gosh is that Juan de la Paz shoot okay uh let's see Kelly says uh yes I, I see everything in a different way uh before I saw was uh, the negative feeling uh it's just a bit of, okay the comments I can do that cool excellent <laughs> you can think like a cave woman <laughs> um yeah, so before we get, you know, start jumping into trying to figure out how pretty the eyes are, what are the lips, and what are the strands of hair, and what is she wearing, and all these things, we need to we need to think about it more in, a, in like a silhouette. You know, you you see a great friend walking across a parking lot, but for some reason you look and you can tell that it's your friend, and you know their name and you know who they are. Because there's something about the way they walk. It's something about the, 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 the type of space that they take up, the energy, the frequency of their pace, right? You, you get very sensitive to energy. You get very sensitive to the vibration of, of life. And, and we all have our own cadence. We all have our own pace, our own rhythm. If you're doing a portrait of somebody, it's very important to kind of like spend some time with them. Maybe let them tell you a couple stories. Um, just so that you can get the soul of that person, the spirit of that person, not their eyeballs and their lips and their noses. It's the stuff behind that, and and it's the rhythm, right? So if the person is a very active uh, energy, um, well, then what you might want to do is is really make sure, like, so when I look at this image, I I I think of um, someone who's kind of like collected and um and peaceful for the most part right i don't see chaos necessarily in this image um and one of the reasons is because of the space from here to here is pretty big uh but it's very calm there, there, there's very little marks in there there's very little contrast the space between the eyebrow and her eyes it's it's pretty big the space between her you know the size of her eyes from her um eye uh, the bottom of her eyelid down to where her mouth is. Like, we don't really have a huge, you know, a really, really strong cheekbone in there, you know, that's cutting through. And so the eye just gently flows and, and you know, just, just softly and, and, uh, and gently moves down through your image. And because it's moving at that slower, gentle, um, calmer uh, pace... That's why we feel that she's calm. 
Now, one reason she's also calm is I saw how you were using your pencil, and you you, you spent a lot of time uh, making your marks, but you're also very 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 delicate in it, right? And that comes across. So if you want her to feel that she has that energy, uh, you know, like uh, uh, like um, like the uh, insecurity, which is a very violent energy, then you need to get you know. You see how the rhythm of that is is this. It's like as soon as you feel that you're moving in this direction, now you're moving in that direction. So you feel like you're moving in that direction. All of a sudden, you, you're getting thrown back. And then when your eye starts to move in that way, then just jerk this way and then jerk that way and then jerk that way. And and so you want to be able to control the eye for it for it to um, uh, to, to move the eye at a certain rate, at a certain speed. So if I make this movement, that's very jerky, right? Now if I go like this, that's very calm. And yet, for the most part, we went the same amount of distance, okay? But that's... <laughs> this is... <laughs> and so one of the things we say at the academy is, if you spell the word um, space, it's... it's <laughs> the space... Inside the space, there's pace, right? So you want to figure out your pacing of how the eye moves through an image. Do you want it to move quickly? Do you want to move slower? Um, and, and that's a big part of the composition process. So, for example, if you want the birds to come to her quickly, then keep them close, right? So that as you see that object, that energy up here, they're close to her. But if you want them to feel like they're coming to her, they're not there yet, they're coming to her, you can see the distance, just by putting some distance between there, that adds more drama to that story. And and then here you can have the hair, you know, by moving ultimately in this direction, it feels like there's wind blowing, but the hair is so so jagged that there's just a lot of energy in that in that place. So again, if we have the jacket and the hair here now moving, moving us up into the direction of that of those birds, that's how that works. All right, cool. I'm going to ask you one quick question. Do you have any any question uh, outside of what we went over that I can just answer? And if not, that's cool. I will move on to Alice. Yeah, I like that uh, too, Susan. I like it a lot more having her a little lower so that there's distance between her and the birds. It adds a little hope. It adds a little like no matter what's going on, you know, you just got to wait maybe just a little bit and, and that and that calm comes in the, in the middle of the storm type of feel. Having um, you too close to the birds, it kind of almost feels like they're like they're nesting in your head, you know. <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. All right. Uh, cool, cool. All right, let me see um, if. Okay. So uh, I see that you just uh, rejoined there, Kelly. I was asking um, if you had any other any questions that you wanted me to uh, uh, touch on before we move on, or if anybody else had any uh, questions before we move on. Thank you very much. That's huge help, and I understand, thanks. Cool, accomplishes. Okay, so we're gonna move on to Alice then, and uh, and this is the stuff we teach at the Academy, so I'm just gonna throw it out there, you know, this is sponsored by the Core 80, and if you wanna learn how to actually do this like a master, like a pro, then you know where to go, core80.com. All right, so let's go here to Miss Alice. Nice drawing there, Miss Alice. Nice story. Cool. Excellent. Um, I like the little happy trail here. I always find that funny. Um, I was fortunate uh, in that the models were willing to do, do this. Oh, okay. That's nice. Um, there was a moment when they clearly forgot uh, I was there. Uh, 
something about the figure isn't working for me. Uh, which figure, the male or the female? Oh, I'm assuming the female, okay. Um, I'm planning on uh, placing them in the privacy of their bedroom. Once. Okay, so you want to put them in the privacy of their bedroom, which is nice. But what I want to warn you against is using nouns to tell the story. So I want you to focus on what is it that makes, you know, I want you to focus on the word privacy, not bedroom. Okay, the bedroom is, is really irrelevant. They could be in the privacy of their kitchen, right, um, or their backyard or whatever. But if you put them in the bedroom and the bedroom is designed not to communicate intimacy, I mean, uh, pri uh, privacy, um, well, then, then it doesn't matter if they're in the bedroom or not, okay? So uh, privacy and tenderness, okay? So let us do that. Uh, let's figure out how we can make um, this a very private, tender moment, okay? Obviously, the nouns that we're looking at, they're holding their hands, and he's holding the belly, and her head is on his head, and all that, all that stuff, you know, we can look at it, and we know where you're going with it. But what we want to do is be able to squint our eyes and feel it, okay? We want it to move for us. We want, we want him to feel that he's becoming one with her, and in the combination of becoming one, there's a deposit in the bottom. And at the same time, their hands are together as one holding them up from the bottom. So it's, it's like the dream is descending into the belly, right, from above. And yet the hands are supporting uh, the, the, the belly from below, okay? So the belly. I say the baby. So what, let's start at the bottom. First of all, you have this curve, okay? You have a, a curve coming in here, and you have this um, shape down here, okay? What I would suggest is to make a horizontal line instead, okay? Make this horizontal. Instead of coming into this V here, it can come down, but somehow this needs to kind of move horizontal as well, okay? And what that's going to do is it's just going to give you a foundation. It's going to feel like everything is solid. Um, it removes all the extra activity. Can't see the entire... Oh, my bad. Fair enough. Weep. Okay. So what I was saying was... Um, Okay. So what I was saying was um, that you have this, this triangle at the bottom, and you have two curves. Okay? So why don't we replace that with horizontals at the bottom of the belly and the pelvis right there and then rather than coming into this triangle somehow figure out maybe the, the pants comes here and then it kind of guides again in, in, a, in a horizontal cross and then back up okay and what that gives us it gives us a nice foundation um, that everything's kind of laying on so we feel that there's strength there's that's that's supporting from underneath um, I would come in here and try to heart make these fingers a little more horizontal as much as possible. Sure, her fingers can come up here like that. That makes sense. But, you know, is there a way where you can come in and, and really push the horizontals in those hands? Again, to really give that, that sense of um, that it's being held up and supported, okay? Um, so if we have this energy at the bottom horizontals, okay, then we take that, we take the shape at the top, and I think with here, what we need to figure out is how can we make them fall in love, 
<laughs> That's kind of funny, but it's a great thing, okay? So how can we get them to be one unit? Um, let me see here. Okay, so the first thing that I'm seeing is I almost would feel like this strong line that you have here that's separating the two needs to be really softened, okay? And I almost feel like just to communicate this concept, you, you want to darken the outline of them a little bit, okay? So that we begin to see not the two, but we begin to see them as one, okay? And I like how you have his head where it almost looks like his head and, and, and her, like, like they're sharing the same neck almost, okay? Like this. So now you have the two heads, they become one. I'd probably lower the value of um, this of uh, back here so that it's not so strong, okay? Um, and then what you want to uh, pay attention to is making sure that these lines in here, oops, how rude, let me go here, okay, and then somehow mimicking, mimicking these lines, okay, so I like how you have that here, um, you see how you have the neck coming this way? I, I would force it this way. The hair, all of these, and just find as many coincidences as you can, even if you're forcing it. Um, the, like the hair is coming here and coming back, right? Well, I, I would redo the hair so that it, it, it falls more in into that, um, In, into that direction, into that into that gesture, okay? And that way when you're looking at it, you do see consciously two people, but your eye moves through it as one. And, and just getting in here and repeating as much as possible through him and her so that they're really one. So they're one in design, and yet... One way of putting it is that they're one subconsciously, but consciously they're two, okay? So to our physical eye, what we're seeing, what we're looking at is, is two different people. But what we're experiencing and feeling is there's only one entity, and whatever that entity is, what it's doing is it's moving us... The, um, it's moving us like this. Does that make sense, Alice? Okay, it makes perfect sense to repeat the curves in the in alignment. Okay, I see what you're doing. Okay, great, cool. I can move on. Now, what we've done is we have established oneness up here. Okay, using basically that curve, we establish the support supportiveness down here by using a horizontal. Now the question is, how do we create the baby. How do we take the two who now are merging into one and really begin to, to, to feel the life descending? Okay, it has to descend and it has to form. Okay, and so, I mean, you basically already have it. I mean, right now what you have is kind of like this uh, circle, right? Boom. We're, we're going to make that horizontal at the bottom so it feels like there's a weight at the bottom. Um, and then you have her arms. We have to figure out what we're going to do with her arms and all the fabric. And, you know, your eye really isn't moving in this area. Okay, so let me, let me get rid of all this stuff here. Right now, this is very boxy. Okay, it's, it's, it's almost a, a square. And... If we draw a circle in here, it's kind of like 
that's basically what you have is like a big round circle. Um, so how can we do that? Well, I, I would I would encourage you to uh, break it up, okay? Make her her shoulders leaning maybe this way, right? So the breast is leaning this way. All of these little marks are leaning, thrusting this way. Her jacket maybe this way. And rather than having her arm come out here, maybe we kind of bring it down a little bit. Maybe like like twisting her just a little bit, okay? So she's not so symmetrical. Um, and then coming the opposite direction so that we feel like there's something moving in this in this space, okay? We come in this way. Um, now we place the um, the belly button there, right? Even the little hairs, if you want, you can probably put on that little angle, you know? <laughs> oh, sorry, that's, that's cool. Um, the tips of the fingers, again, could be pushed in that way. So now there's like this movement. Now the problem right now is what I have right there is I have just this. It, it's kind of like a, <clears throat> you know, like, like, ooh, it just kicked, you know, which is nice. It's just a, the, the first boom, you know, a little bump. <clears throat> so maybe what we can do is if we want it to actually feel like it's moving, moving, well, then we come in with an arabesque, okay? I don't like that. So maybe we come in like this, okay? So now we're, we're curving maybe this side, the, the elements on this side to come through. We still are going to bring in our diagonals coming this direction to give that energy like it's coming in, it's forcing, it's coming down from above. Then it's spinning around. So when we come into the spin section, what we want to do is begin to curve all these little elements to mimic this, the, the curve of that spin. Okay, so this doesn't work anymore. So what we want to do is curve that breast out a little bit and then maybe fade that, that line back up just a little bit and then, then come back in. Um, fade it, you know, have this little curve here, this curve here, maybe even in the shoulder. Uh, you could even lower his shoulder just so it can mimic, like he's coming right, oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. That was nice, right there. You can see now he's kind of like popping up behind her a little bit, you know? But all of that works together to kind of get the eye to, to twist a little bit more. Um, bring in these curves in here, back in, and then lower this part right there. You see how that's working? Like there's a lot of movement and there's support at the bottom, there's one that's at the top, and then there's just this this movement, this life that's this thing that's forming in the invisible. It, it, it's bingo, okay, cool. So you got it. Um Well that was a really cool cool thing. Uh so I, I, I think we're going to keep doing this on uh, on Fridays for, for a time. Let's see how long it goes and, and, and what we do with it. Um, and uh, it looks like I can probably spend about 15, 20 minutes on a, on a person. And if we take an hour, uh, that's two. So maybe, maybe we aim for four or five of these on a Friday uh, afternoon, which could be really, really cool. Um, the curve at the top of her rest makes it seem she's leaning back on him exactly exactly yeah I like that a lot that's that's really beautiful cool cool and then here you might bring instead of having this vertical for the little hairy um, little trail here you might you might you you, know, you, 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 you might even just twist her to the side a little bit you know I mean that's too far up but um, but kind of just play before you, you know, just like with Kelly, before you start getting into trying to draw it out. And this is okay. If you want to just draw it out for a sketch so you, you have an image on paper, then go back and put a piece of tracing paper over top of it and start pushing the energy. Start with the energy first, okay? 
then and then you can get into your thrusts and then you can get into line strategies and, and then spacing strategies uh, and all that stuff builds up to a final drawing that's tight that's museum quality that communicates uh, um, accurately and um, and and then ultimately you have an image that you know so intimately and, and, it, and it touches a lot of people in a, in a beautiful way so all right uh, tracing paper yes Alice um, I'm gonna open it up anyone have any questions or comments that you want uh, me to see and I'll keep this open for a few more minutes and if not then I will say please visit the core 80.com if uh, you're interested in learning this information then that's where you want to go core 80.com uh, apply I'll get in touch with you and we'll go ahead and get you get you started um, one of our, our last student who just came in, they just texted me today saying, oh my gosh, I, the, the, the first, the, the, one of the things I learned in the first lesson, I just, this lady I was teaching had a problem, I did it, and bam, and it worked, and everybody was so excited, and, and she's like, you know, all excited right now, um, that not only did it work for her, but it worked for her students, and, and everybody was winning, so those kind of little neat testimonials, testimonies I hear all the time, um, because when something works, it works. And design and composition works. So, all right, guys. Um, Kelly and Alice. Uh, Alice, you already belong to the, <clears throat> to the uh, We Compose uh, Facebook group. Alice, I want to add you to that, okay? Um, and when you guys go back and rework these uh, images, go ahead and post it in there. And then the, the AOC community uh, can reach out to you and, and give you some encouragement or point some things out to you, okay? So on that note, Arrivederci. Have a great Friday. Don't drink too much because we just saw an image about pregnant women. <laughs> have fun. Ciao.